Hello and welcome. My name is Sergio Contreras. I'm a postdoc at the Donation and International Physics Center, and the title of this talk is How Well Does Galaxy Classing Constrain Cosmology and Assembly Bias? Lambda CDM is the most common and successful model we have today to describe our universe. And this is beside the part that we don't understand what is lambda and what is CDM. So why is tennis so used and successful? And the answer is because it can reproduce the, galaxy, uh, the clustering of galaxies. So let me give you an example. In the left part of the slides, in blue, you can see the distribution of galaxies from observations. And in red, you can see the distribution of dark matter halos from a dark matter simulation. You see, these dark matter simulations are a product of the cosmology that you put as an input. So the fact that this, uh, the distribution of mass in this simulation are so similar to the one observation is one of the reasons we use uh, these kind of models. But what if we could use this actually to try to constrain the cosmology from our universe? For example, if we increase the amount of uh, dark matter, how much the classing of this uh, dark matter halo will change? It will be more or less similar to this, uh, to this galaxy distribution. And this is mostly what we want to do in this project. So the aim of this project are the following ones. First, we want to be able to constrain cosmological information from galaxy clustering. Second, we would like to see if we could constrain other kind of information, such as a galaxy assembly bias, also from galaxy clustering. And third, we would like to determine which class, uh, galaxy cluster statistic or which scales are the ones who contribute the most to, this, um, to these constraints. How do we do this? Well, the most basic approach will be to run a dark matter simulation at a fixed cosmology, create a mock galaxy catalog at, at that simulation, and then compare its galaxy clustering with the one from observations. If the galaxy clustering is within one sigma, then we can say this is a valid model. If not, then we have to start over. We can put this in a Monte Carlo kind of approach, and with this, we can do constraints of the cosmology. From these three steps, there is one that is much more simple, and two that are more complex. The one that is more simple, basically because of the effort of the community, it used, to, it used not to be simple, is uh, comparing the, uh, the galaxy class from the MOX to observation. And this is because of uh, there, there are new public efficient code to measure galaxy clustering. Um, there are also many public covariant matrix for observational clustering. And there are some alternatives to the basic MCMC approach. For example, there is this nested sampling, or there are iterative emulation, there are several other ways. So this part is mostly covered. But uh, the two first part, generating a dark matter simulation and creating mock galaxy clustering could be either not that precise or really, really expensive. And this is what we want to focus now. For dealing with the creating of dark matter simulation, we're going to uh, use what is called the scaling technique. This is technique developed by Angulo and White in 2010. It's able to redistribute the, the matter of an already run dark matter simulation. So it's a way of recycling the simulation. So it can mimic the galaxy the matter clustering, the halo clustering, whatever kind of clustering you have there, from a one from another simulation with another cosmology. So as an example here, you will have a dark matter simulation at the left that took hundreds of thousands of CPU hours, and then we, uh, we scale it so it can look as the one you have in the right, which only took a few seconds. Uh, the precision of this technique is quite good. Uh, we have measured it several times. And at the right, you have an example of a, sub -halo, a standard subhalo abundance matching run over an ex uh, 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 a scale simulation and a real simulation. You can see that the clustering is really, really close. The, this is scaling, the idea is to uh, we can scale to a huge range of cosmologies. So. For this project, we actually vary only four of these parameters, uh, sigma 8, omega matter, neutrino masses, and age, because uh, we, uh, only these four are the ones who show a significant change in the galaxy clustering. But the, we have tested our scaling technique, 
um, on this eighth cosmological parameter you have seen here with a high level of precision. The second technique that we're going to use is the subhalo Bundas matching extended model. As its name indicates, this is an extension of the already successful subhalo Bundas matching model. In this model, uh, the luminosity or a stellar mass of a galaxy sample is matched to the subhalo mass or the peak rotational velocity or any sub other subhalo property assuming that most luminous or more massive galaxies uh, ho are hosted by the most massive or the faster rotated subhalos. Uh, sub this uh, what a successful model it has its limitation and we extend over it by including an orphan model, a luminosity attenuation or tidal disruption model, and an assembly bias model. So the standard subhalo abundance matching already have an intrinsic level of assembly bias, but that level of assembly bias doesn't necessarily need to be the same as our, your target sample. We don't know which is the level assembly bias of the universe. could be lower or higher compared to what is predicted of the standard subhalo abundance matching model. So if we implement one additional parameter that tune the level of assembly bias of this galaxy sample. In addition, this model also includes a star formation rate prescription, which we are not using in this work. Something really important to take into consideration is that our subhalo abundance matching extended model only uses four free parameters. In summary, what our approach does different to other approaches is that thanks to the scaling technique, we don't need to run hundreds of simulations with different cosmology, but we can focus our computation resources on running five, for example, uh, dark matter simulation. This uh, dark matter simulation will have higher resolution, which will allow us to run more realistic galaxy population models. And thanks to the uh, scaling technique, we can also sc uh, scale the simulation to hundreds of thousand different cosmologies. So using this, we can run an emulator basically we after populating the different scale simulation with our same model uh, we can measure the galaxy clustering and this in emulator with basically a fancy interpolator in multi-dimension we put it in a really simple way to have a clustering prediction for example monopole quadrupole hexadecapole projected correlation function in a matter of milliseconds Another characteristic of our approach that is different from other works is that instead of going directly and measure the cosmology and assembly bias from observational sample, we decide to first try to constrain the cosmology from some complex galaxy population model where we know its cosmology. In this case will be an hydrodynamic simulation, the TNG300, uh, which is 205 megaparsec divided by h aside, and a semi-analytic model uh, in, a, uh, in a box of 500 megaparsec divided by h, in this case, L galaxies. Uh, for the semi-analytic model, we run basically, as, apart from the fiducian model, which is based in Enriquez 2015, we run other four extreme physical implementations so we can actually test how well our model perform under really different uh, physic, uh, physics because we don't know actually which is the physics that rules our universe. So this way we can actually test the real performance of our approach. For both, uh, for both we select a galaxy sample selected uh, at a fixed number density in magnitude r. We select one number density for the TNG300 because the volume is much lower and five for L galaxies. Uh, something important here is that Please take a second and think that if you go and just measure the cosmology from an observational sample and you haven't tested your model, any kind of systematics, any kind of error that you have, you will still have constraint. And if your covariant matrix is uh, has low errors, the constraints are going to be low, but nothing guaranteed that that value is real. This way we go and test it with really complex model, really different from what, uh, what we're doing with the same model. Uh, remember, chain model only have four, parameter, uh, four parameters in a really simplistic model compared to these other two. And we can actually see the real performance of our model. So now let's see how our model performs. 
Here we have in red circles the galaxy cluster of the TNG 300, WP, monopole and quadruple. And first let's focus on the green line. In the green line I'm looking for a, for a simulation with the same cosmology. Uh, how we can how well we can reproduce the galaxy clustering and you can see actually that our model passed immediately over all the points uh, of the TNG here we can reproduce almost perfect it galaxy clustering and let's see the, the, then how the blue line performs the blue line is our emulator where we let all the parameters uh, vary including the cosmological parameter and this is the best fit uh, for the TNG clustering and we can see that we also get a great performance actually and this is important the, the predictions are almost equally good when we fix the cosmology than when we don't and what we're showing here is that not only the sh uh, shame model can reproduce almost perfect the clustering of the TNG but also and this is really important that the cosmology uh, the best cosmology when choose when we let all the cosmology parameter free is really close to the one of the TNG because the clustering signal is really similar. So this is a huge validation for our work. Now let's see how this uh, how our model performed for uh, a semi-analytic model. Here I'm showing three of the five uh, extreme physics that I run. Uh, well, actually, you have El Galaxy the fiducial one in red, while we have for the other models we have two really extreme physics you can see the different in different uh, in for even for the same number density for the for the galaxy clustering and again in green we have the uh, value when we fix the cosmology to the uh, to the cosmology we run the semi analytic model and again we find an almost perfect agreement at all number density so we're not biased in number density and also we're not biased for the different physics we have um, so one of the models for example has almost no satellite galaxies and still it performed really well and again in blue what we have is the model where we let the cosmology to be whatever cos uh, cosmology uh, want to be in this huge range of cosmology we allow them to, to vary and while there are really really small difference it's clearly that they, they perform almost identical so again with this we are already guaranteed that the best cosmology that we're going to have like the constraint of cosmology is going to be within one sigma from our uh, from the real cosmology in this case which is a Planck cosmology and as expected here you can see the cosmological constraint for the uh, for all the galaxy population model shown before in blue you can see the cosmology from the models and we can see that in all cases we're able to constrain the cosmology within one sigma even more, you can see that the same parameters that describe the different physics of the model, they are really different. And this is showing that we cover a huge range of uh, different physics here. And in all cases, we are able to recover the course cosmology. This is another huge validation for our work. Please notice at the right, you can see uh, sigma eight and omega matter h square, that not only the, result, the, the constraints are narrow, but if we fix the value of the Hubble parameter, we actually get much narrow constraint, especially for omega matter. And this is also telling us the potential of our model. Now, uh, how well our model can actually constrain assembly bias? Of course, we could show the constraint of the, para of the assembly bias parameter that was shown before, but Better actually is to show the real constraint on the assembly bias level. And how we can do this? What we can do is just to take a, a number of um, models for the, from the MCMC chains. In this case, I think it's around 100 with just lower and uh, lower values and higher values of this, and the results are not uh, do not have a huge impact. And measure the assembly budget of each of these models using the known as uh, a shuffling technique. And for this, what we obtain is that uh, either if we fit uh, all the WP or if we also use the multiples, that we are always able to recover the right amount of assembly bias for the semi-analytic model for all the number densities. Even more, when you add the multiples, the constraint gets much narrow. It's even more important to remark that 
without including the multiples here, we will not be able to say that we uh, distinguish from a zero assembly bias level. So uh, this will uh, tell us that in case we want to measure assembly bias from the uh, observable universe, we should uh, use multiples because if not, we're most probably going to uh, get really large error bars and we will not be able to say that we can detect assembly bias from the universe. But this is another validation for our approach that we can actually uh, constrain assembly bias from galaxy clustering. Uh, the result for a semi-analyte model for the only number density we could test uh, show exactly the same result. We, uh, we can recover the right value of assembly bias in the, uh, for both WP and if we extend it to multiples, but uh, to, the only way to get really narrow constraint is by adding these multiples. We reached to the end of this talk. If there are three things that I really, really like you to remember from it is that uh, the subhalo bundas matching technique have proved to reproduce any galaxy clustering we tested, either a semi-analytic, hydrodynamic, different physics, different number densities, and only with four free parameters. Second is that combining the subhalo bundas matching extended model with uh, the scaling technique, we can reproduce any galaxy clustering signal at any cosmology. And this allowed us to constrain cosmology and assembly uh, bias information from galaxy clustering. Finally, the last thing to remember is that we now uh, validate completely our approach and we are going to target for observational sample to have robust measurement of cosmology and assembly bias. Thank you very much for your attention.